As a kid growing up, it was just, you know, I just enjoyed coming down here. I can still remember them days where boats coming in very low in the water, full of fish, and I just loved boxing the fish up off the deck, and yeah, it was, it was, it was great. It was great. They were good times. Left school at 14. 14, uh, just wasn't interested. The school teacher would go through all my books and there was just pictures of boats drawn. I just, are you going to do the, any schoolwork? I went, no. Nah. They used to do, bring in the class things about boats just to keep me interested in being in class. As a kid, used to sleep under Dad's bed and Dad was always the type of person that he'd put his feet on the ground, sit up on the bed before he'd open his eyes. So he had to tread on me to go to work. I used to go, right, I'm ready, and they used to die. They didn't know what was going on. Two, three o'clock in the morning, we'd be arguing out the front about going fishing for the day. My life has always revolved around the harbours, fishing. There was never going to be anything else other than to go fishing. Nothing could turn me off it. Camillo Puglisi had three boys, and they moved from Ulladulla to Bermagui. They were the family that really pioneered the tuna industry in New South Wales. Frank Puglisi was a longline fisherman. He was a mentor and a tutor for a lot of kids. He gave kids the opportunity to skip a boat, which went on now to buy their own boats and be their own owners. And he just lived on the wharf and he always had time to, to talk to anybody. He didn't care if you had one dollar to your name or a million dollars. You know, he used to say, I'm so lucky I have three, three feeds a day. That's his motto. He, money didn't worry him. If you could sit there and have a coffee with him, that meant more to him than anything else. Well, I um, left school at 14 and I was already going with Dad from the age of seven. They were trying to keep me in school and they were telling me, oh, you need your school, year 10 certificate to get your skipper's ticket. And I said, oh, yeah, all right. And so I went and seen the bloke uh, at the TAFE, done the skipper's ticket. I said, yeah, do I need my year 10? He goes, no. I says, right, I'm leaving school, Mum. Oh, don't you want it? No, I said, no. I'm going. Well, I think Bermagui was based on fishing. It was always been a fishing port. It's close to the continental shelf, and so a lot of people didn't have to travel as far out to go and catch a fish. It doesn't matter if it was commercial or recreational. It has been a town that has developed through the fishing industry no matter what. Went through some hard times with the restructure of the fishery. We were down to 12 members and we, things were a little bit worrying for the co-op and their future. And so we decided that, you know, we were going to put our hands in our pocket and we we're going to build a new co-op and we we're going to be tenants and we we're going to rent out shops. And it was all a big dream and a big fantasy, but then it, it was a reality. And we ended up achieving that goal. And you know, now we've built this new building, it doesn't matter if there's even one fisherman there left in the future. There, there's always going to be somewhere for him to unload his seafood. And that was the whole idea of building this complex. You will be judged in the industry on how well you are respected in the community. You are respected because you are a good person. Sadly, Frank passed away just over a year ago and I just didn't lose a mentor, I lost a good mate. He had the utmost respect, you know, Frank to Bermagui. You know, he's sadly missed in Bermagui. He's a true legend of the town. He was a true fisherman, but he gave a lot of kids an opportunity you look up to someone and you just want to be like them sort of thing. Like I used to look up to my father and just wanted to be him. We've been through some very tough times but we've come out of them pretty strong and if not stronger than when we went in. Fishing is always going to be a part of the east coast of New South Wales. It doesn't matter what it is, it's always going to be a part of Bermagui.